Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we're going to be checking out another one of your guys' solar systems. So we've got one system today from the user Heska Mods in Discord, so massive thank you to them for sending in their system. But without further ado, let's get straight into the action. So, workshop, it should already be in here. There are we, there it is. Okay, cool, cool. Right, let's see what we have got here. Okay, so, ooh. Right. The Ferenc system. I hope I'm saying that right. The system is composed of its central star and several planets and other objects. In the past, it was captured a brand of warfare that is still in orbit. The main feature of it is there are two belts of asteroids and comets alike. The wider one is the Alfea belt, and the smaller one is the Maya belt. Maya belt. Um, it is situated in A to our humanity. In A to our humanity. Yeah, unknown satellite galaxy, the Andromeda galaxy. The star is roughly 2.78 billion years old. Comets are listed at the very bottom. Okay, right, cool. I really like how he's listed all this. It's pretty cool. Right, so we've got Acury first. Oh, hello. Oh, where are we? Oh, whoa. Whoa. -ho. Pretty fancy. He's got the custom background as well. Oh, yeah. Oh, check this out. Orbis. So, Ekuri here, the first of the planets. So let's go, can we go on a uh, realistic? Yeah, that's more like it. Okay, so, it is primarily composed of carbon and features a lot of volcanoes that have created an atmosphere of toxic greenhouse gases and gases around the world. Cool. So next up we've got Nables over here. Nables. It is almost completely covered in desertous wasteland. Several million years ago, it was once located further out from the star, which in turn gave it the ability to maintain some basic life. However, due to gravitational influences, it migrated further towards the star. Okay. Vercotis is next up. The comets are looking pretty cool, actually. I do like that. This is a really nicely designed system. I can already just tell that from just the first bits I've seen. I really like this. Right, so next planet here. Looking pretty nice. The first from the start to have actual water and life forms on its surface. This world also emits heavy amounts of light, which is accounted due to the existence of precious materials in the shape of huge crystals. Oh yeah, there you go. So that's a cool looking city light map as well. Do you like that? Very cool. The first moon, Gremma, that's where I was that, over here, exhibits similar features, meaning they could share a similar origin. There you go, see it with the green lights as well. Sweet. The poles are seemingly mountains of water, which is more unusual, though. Okay. we got Utah over here. Utah? I don't yeah, basically Utah. <laughs> right, there it is. That's a nicely designed one. The second moon Utah, however, lacks materials and some water mass. Despite this, it got gifted unique surface colours by the nature of space. The poles are seemingly mountains of water, which are more unusual, though. Interesting. That's a nicely designed world. I like that. Cool. There it is in the normal colours. Sweet. Cool. Right, so moving on to some dwarf planets now. Oh, there's so many things. Ho ho. So where is Vernov? There it is. Let's turn that off. Cool. Right. This world is composed of common rocks, but mainly andesite. The higher mountainous regions are most of other uh, are made of other mostly currently unknown rocky materials. The first dune, Simia, is very smooth and was barely ever impacted by any celestial objects. Oh, there's Vernov itself. I was looking at one of the moons. So there we go. So that's the planet. Or the dwarf planet. First moon there, Semia. And the second moon, Oceum, has a global ocean wrapping around it. Cool. Moving on, we've got Hantar. It's a gas planet 1. Over here. Oh, that's looking very fancy. All right. The only gaseous world left at roughly this one's semi-major axis. At least two others have been observed in the distant past. The disappearance of the others is unknown and undocumented. 
Its most outstanding features, however, are the bands of it. They are colourful and house different gases, climates and weathers respectively. It also has a ring system. Its only moon, Isuna, has surface water and an atmosphere. Besides that, it may handily or actively disrupts the ring system of Hantar causing an irregular appearance. There it is. Very close to its parent planet as well. So that definitely would upset some of those rings. Right, next up we got Maya. Dwarf Planet 4. Okay. Or Rocky Planet 4, sorry. So where is that? Over here. Pretty crazy orbit going on there. Okay. Big patch of snow there. It is the central point of intelligent life in the whole system, which is unfortunately not everlasting due to the extreme cold environment. Extinction note is slated to be around 1 million years after present times. Its only moon, Felsen, is expected to get closer to Maya and break apart, forming a ring system in similar millions of years to come. Okay. Interesting. So there's the ring system. Well, the moon, sorry, there it is. Okie dokie. Cool. Next up, we've got Alfia, Rocky Planet 5. Where is that over here? Cool. Looking very nice indeed. Currently in the late stages of freezing, this world is being attracted by Tonus. The more often they pass at the closest distance to each other, this could either result in capture around Tonus or ejection from the solar system. Ooh. It also has ring systems, an inner and a broken up outer one. The first moon, Erbos, is a regular asteroid satellite that is larger in size <coughs> oh, excuse me, at mass than the others. Um, the surface is also different, which could be the cause of or cause possible impact events. <laughs> You can see the first and second ring system. That is a very, very cool design. So there's uh, Bones there. First moon. And then the second moon, Penumbra, which is a former dwarf planet which has been captured a long time ago and is responsible for disruption of the outer ring. So there it is. This is a troublemaker there. Okay. So next up, we've got Tonus. So it's a brown dwarf. Where is that lurking? There it is. Oh yeah, okay. It was once a rogue planet in deep space when the friends system passed by and captured it. Since it, uh, since then, it has captured several minor objects. Um, where are we? Uh, several minor objects and a few large ones. Through the most temporary, most temporary, it also has ring systems. The outer, on being an unorganized belt of asteroids. Its first moon, Nax Rama, is supposedly covered with rare orange-red materials, currently not known to anyone. Okay. Um, the second moon, Alcondis, has light water coverage and could feature a crust of lapis lazuli. Um, it was once captured by Tonus ejection into an orbit around, for instance again, and that later captured now, oh, once more, it seems more stable nowadays. Cool. Very nice. There we go, okay. Right, and then um, there's its other moon. So you can see how its asteroid belt sets as well. Got a lot of those. There's its other moon there. Simply, simply lovely. Okay. So next up we've got uh, Mefnet. Ooh, yeah, okay. Looking good. As its name implies, it is mainly made of methane on the outer layer of the planet, though it does feature some other exotic gases as well. It also has an irregular orbit, which could mean that it migrated outwards of the inner solar system due to a larger body of mass and possible interstellar origin. It also has uh, ring systems, an inner and an outer one. So we've got a lot of rings going on in this system, haven't we? Very, very cool. Okay. The only moon with Kikamar texture-wise is pretty flat. However, it does have some significant craters. So that's here. It's got a lot of rings. There it is. Very flat, isn't it? Yeah. All right. Okay. 
Okay, where are we going next? Where are we? Oh, oh hang on. Um, so, Prisa Pristalis. Look at these orbits, wow, we. Okay, um, there it is. Looking very nice. Oh, that's an asteroid. I like how we locked onto that instead of the planet. So this one's got lots of rings as well. A lot of very fancy uh, gas giants in here. Gas giant 4, composed of over 95% uh, of hydrogen, helium, and other some methane. This ice dwarf lurks in the outer reaches of the system. The small size came due to this region featuring fairly few gases and dust all over it. It also has a ring system, has three moons, Adele, Arali, Telav, a minor and captured by the dwarf planet in the past. Their main difference between regular asteroids are extraordinary appearances. Cool, so let's get all the moons up there. So we've got one, two, and then three. Yeah, they're all pretty pretty funky colours. So there's those guys. Next up we've got Des, Dwarf Planet 3. Over here. Got a little ring system as well. Likes this ring systems. Um, it is funded by a freezing cold desert, which surprisingly shows water as ice caps rather than thin thickness. It also has a ring system. Then we got Obscura, Dwarf Planet 4. Where are we? Obscura, where, where is that? There it is. Over here. Oh, hey, click it. Oi, what's going on? Let me click. Ah, oh, I hate it when the game does this. Oh, come on, I'm clicking once. It shouldn't be doing that. Oh, my God. Right, let's just zoom in. Manually control it. There you go. Ooh, that's a very extreme... Oh, I like that. The cold desert world featuring a thick atmosphere and clouds. Its composition is unknown. It also has a ring system. Its moons are asteroids that do not provide anything worthwhile. But there you go. We'll see them anyway. So there's one there. And the second one over here. Cool. And then lastly, we have the comets. So Comet Sol Soltit. Satellite. Is that down in the... I think that's more down the centre, isn't it? There it is. So, first of the comets. It's not often that people do comets in their systems, so it's quite refreshing to see some, actually. A comet that is said to exhibit the shortest orbit of any uh, long-period comet. It is stated that an encounter with Mermet in times long ahead is almost impossible not to happen eventually. Should this event occur, the comet will most likely disappear and get destroyed by the gaseous planet. Alternatively, the highly improbable, it could get captured and become an irregular satellite. So then we got Comet Arcuni, which is this one. So it's actually approaching the star, getting very hot as well by the looks of it. So there it is. Oh my gosh, it's got a moon. Whoa! Tidal heating. That's a bit, oh man, it's pretty close to that as well. Obviously, the star itself. It's a cool picture, actually. I do like that. The glowing hot celestial body is the first observed planet, a binary comet. Its companion XNCR, though, is fairly young compared to the host. This is a result of an impact event that occurred recently. The pair is currently in the process of cooling down. Oh, okay. Comet Gobi. An interstellar visitor to the system, this comet stems from another star that is calculated to be roughly 10 light years away. Its visible tail could cross a distance from one inner side of the belt to the other. So where is it? Comet Gobi. Oh yeah, that's got a real pretty slingshot kind of orbit going on. Again, it's not letting me click it. Look. Okay, we'll just we'll just use the menu. Where is it? There you go. Cool. And then lastly, Comet Curio is the only known comet to orbit a planet in a stable state. It Tonus captured it a long while ago, though unknown when it passed close to its second ring. So this is often the brown dwarf, isn't it? Well, effectively, it is. Uh, you know, you could class it as a star rather than the planet. It's a personal preference, I guess. But there you go. So it's actually a little bit of that. Nice. So there we go. That is the Forensic system. So. Very nice indeed, I enjoyed that. Very, very cool design as well. You know, it's definitely a unique one. I've got a lot of crazy orbits going on out there as well. Very nicely done. 
So yeah, there we go. That was submitted by Husker Mods in Discord. So again, a massive thank you to them for sending this in. And yeah, guys, if you enjoyed this system, make sure to press that like button, subscribe for more, and help us on the journey to 40,000 subscribers. And yeah, hope you uh, all enjoyed it. Let's even go for 100 likes on today's video as well, guys. And yeah, with that all said and done, again, a massive thanks to Husker Mods for sending this in. And yeah, with that all said and done, guys, make sure you have a great day. Stay safe out there. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.